All right, thanks for watching. And today, in our continuation of our fractional derivative adventure, I want to tell you about fractional Taylor series. And by the way, this is not my idea. I would like to thank Justin Bloom for coming up with the idea. It's really, really cool. So, previously in calculus, you probably learned about the Taylor series of a function, which let me write as TA, like Tabrizian, of f. So the Taylor series of f at x is the sum from n from 0 to infinity of the nth derivative of f at a over n factorial x minus a to the n. And it turns out, again, just formally, there is a continuous analog of this, which is as follows. So the question is, how can we generalize this? Well, a sum will probably becomes an integral. So integral from 0 to infinity, and we're integrating t, so something dt, x minus a to the n becomes x minus a to the t. So far, so good. And now, well, we would like to have a continuous analog of the factorial, and a very good analog is the gamma function, or if you want the pi function, it also works let's say gamma to the t plus 1. And the last question is, man, so far we only had integer derivatives. If only we had continuous derivatives, but this is what fractional derivatives are good for. So you can just replace it with the teeth derivative of f at a. And there are many videos defining the fractional derivatives, and they're valid for any t not just uh, fractions, but also uh, integer, uh, also real numbers. So in particular, if you consider the Maclaurin series, so let's a be zero, and let's say you consider the function, uh, uh, if a is zero, we get a Maclaurin series, and let's also for today consider the special function e to the x, I think it works for, what I'm going to show works for any power of e to the x. So e to the kx for any k. Uh, and in particular, in this case, what's the Taylor series? Or I guess the Maclaurin series? T0f, or t0 e to the x at x. And bad, bad notation, but what this is, it's the integral from 0 to infinity. And, well, the any derivative of e to the x is e to the x. So in particular, the teeth derivative of e to the x is e to the x. And if you have also, let's say, dt e to the x is e to the x, in particular, dt e to the x at 0 is e to the 0, which is 1. So this coefficient is 1, and then we just get x minus 0 to the t. So x to the t, it's exciting and gamma t plus 1 dt and notice this is a function of x not a function of t because we're integrating this and in calculus we know that under certain assumptions this equals to our uh, function here i'm not claiming anything i am not claiming that this is e to the x and this is not what we're going to show in this video. And in fact, I don't know if it's true. Uh, I think uh, Justin said apparently, according to graphs, might not be true. But what I'm going to show is that asymptotically, a piece of this actually goes to e to the x. So claim. Suppose you take the integral, but just from 1 to infinity. Let g of x be the following integral. Not the integral from 0 to infinity, but the integral from 1 to infinity of this. x to the t over gamma of t plus 1 dt. And then I'm claiming that g of x is asymptotically equal to e to the x as x goes to infinity which really means g of x over e to the x goes to 1 as x goes to infinity. 
And the proof of this is very neat, but careful, it's very non-rigorous. So the pure mathematicians might be triggered. So why is the proof? So it's three easy steps. It turns out this G satisfies a very nice differential equation. So let's calculate G prime of X. Again, formally, let's put the derivative inside. And again, uh, might give an analyst a heart attack, but uh, let's do that. So we get T X to the T minus one. Again, it's just a power function, uh, gamma of T plus one, DT. And remember, the gamma function behaves like the factorial. So it has this very nice property that it is the integral from 1 to infinity of, sorry, I'm saying the gamma function is then uh, t times gamma t. Or something like that, I think that's correct. But anyway, uh, doesn't matter too much in this calculation. So we are left with this. So dt, and what's left then is the integral from 1 to infinity of, well, we have t minus 1, and we have this 1, so let's use a u sub, let's say s equals to t minus 1. And then if you plug this back in, so s of 1 is 0, s of infinity is infinity, so we're left with x to the s over gamma to the s plus 1 ds. And that's great. It almost likes our function g, except our function g starts at 1. So let's just separate the integrals out. So it's an integral from 0 to 1 of x to the s over gamma to the s plus 1 ds plus the integral from 1 to infinity of x to the s over gamma to the s plus 1 ds, which is g, so g of x. So what do we get? g satisfies a kind of easy differential equation. It's g prime equals to g plus this little function here. Oh. Let's see. And again, I, I like this not just because of the formula, but I think the proof is cute. It's very differential equations. -y. Um, okay, so what we get is g prime is then g plus this junk term, integral from 0 to 1, x to the t over gamma to the t plus 1 dt. And then what is g of zero? Remember, it's just integral from one to infinity of this thing, but x to the zero, sorry, or, sorry, zero to the t is always zero. So g of zero is just zero. So g satisfies this differential equation, and it turns out we can sort of find g from this. So it's step two. Take this differential equation and multiply it by integrating factor. So what we get? In particular, let's multiply both sides by e to the minus x. So e to the minus x g prime minus e to the minus x g equals e to the minus x integral from 0 to 1 x to the t over gamma to the t plus 1 dt. I just move g on the left-hand side, multiplied by e to the minus x. But the nice thing is, you can recognize this as the Prada loop. This is actually a derivative, namely the derivative of e to the minus x g prime equals to e to the minus x integral, I guess let's just put it inside. You'll we'll see why we do that. So integral from 0 to 1, e to the minus x, x to the t, gamma of t plus 1 dt. And then just integrate this, let's say from 0 to x. And what we get is, if you integrate that from 0 to x, you get e to the minus x g of x minus e to the 0 g of 0, but g of 0 is 0, 
and you get integral from 0 to x, integral from 0 to 1, well, let's not use x twice, let's call it s, e to the minus s, s to the t, gamma of t plus 1, dt ds, and let's just Fubini that, and it looks like a complicated Fubini problem, but it's not, because you see x is fixed. So what you're doing, you're integrating t from 0 to 1, and then s from 0 to x. So it's not a triangle here, it's just a rectangle. So Fubini that, integral from 0 to 1, integral from 0 to x, e to the minus s, s to the t over gamma to the t plus 1, ds dt. And what's nice is this bad term, this 1 over gamma term, we can just pull it outside. And then you get a much easier integral. So this is integral from 0 to 1, 1 over gamma to the t plus 1, integral from 0 to x, e to the minus s, s to the t, ds dt s dt all right now you may recognize this almost as a gamma function so this should be gamma to the t plus one if only x is infinity but remember we want to show that as x goes to infinity something happens so indeed what we get then at the end so step three. Now let's take the limit as x goes to infinity of this term. And you see, we want to show this as 1 because we want to show g is asymptotic to e to the x. But now we can do this. That's integral from 0 to 1, gamma of t plus 1, integral from 0 to infinity, e of minus s, s to the t ds, but well, that's just integral from 0 to 1, 1 over gamma to the t plus 1. This is precisely the gamma function at t plus 1. This cancels out, ds, and we're left with the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 ds, and we get exactly what we want, that this limit is 1. So in other words, g of x over e to the x goes to 1, so g of x is asymptotically equal to e to the x.